Aloha and welcome to Knitted Paradise, where the needles are clicking and the yarn is squishy. My name is Lucia. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Pearl of the Pacific. Today is Sunday, March 20th. Sorry to think about that for a second. And this is my knitting podcast. And today is the first day of spring. So happy spring, everyone. And let's get going. Below the conch shell, we have the March thin along going on, and so if you have any spring cleaning, as in old works in progress that you, um, you know, want to finish during the month of March, this would be a good month to do it and post it in the um, thread in the Ravelry group, which is Knitted Paradise Podcast, and you'll be entered to win a prize of some sort, yet to be determined. We'll figure that out later. There will be one. All right, on the island, I have socks. What a surprise, right? So I have a multitude of socks. I guess not that many, but I finished some socks. So the socks that are still on the needles are the um, Crazy Monkeys by Jennifer O'Sullivan out of Gnome Acres House Gnome in the Scarlet Witch colorway, and that is what they are looking like, which is absolutely beautiful. And this is a pattern that was adapted from the Cookie A pattern, monkey, the monkey pattern that's hugely popular. Um, this is a toe up version um, with no purling. Because I know there's also a no pearl monkeys. This is a toe up no pearl monkeys. And it's super quick to knit. Uh, I don't actually know the shoe size of the person who's getting these yet, so I've kind of stopped here. Um, I think she wears about the same size as I do, probably a little bigger. So I've just kind of left it here where I would um, start the gusset for me. So we'll, I'm waiting to hear back about her shoe size. So these will get worked on once I figure that out. And I'm just going to move things over to the floor over here. And yesterday I cast on a new pair of socks with some leading men fiber arts. Apocalypse is the colorway and the base is Spotlight. And I ordered this at Knitting Pipeline because um, they didn't have it in stock in the base I needed. So I ordered it from them and it came. So I didn't get to show that off yesterday, last week. Sorry, my video cut off. I don't know, my computer was having issues and all of a sudden I realized it had cut off part of the video. So this is a From the Mainland that came a couple weeks ago. They're super quick with their custom dyes. If you ever order thing, anything from them in a custom die, it comes really fast. And so this is how it is knitting up, and there's lots of red, which is perfect. That's what I wanted. I forgot to ask for lots of red, but it came with lots of red, which is exactly what I wanted. <laughs> and these are going to be the One Way Socks by M Melissa Sibley. And um, I'm adapting it for Toe Up, of course. And so, yeah. I don't think I've started the pattern on either of them. I might be on like one. Yeah, it's not enough to actually see it. I think there's one repeat there, which you can't actually see, so I won't bother. <laughs> but these are coming along nice. I have two toes that I cast on yesterday and then um, started the pattern and then had to rip back because I made a mistake and I wanted to change a couple things. Um, so those are living in my cheapy bag from Knit Spin Farm. Uh, the other thing is something I cast on this morning, which is a new shawl design for the um, Two Guys Yarn Company. And this is what it looks like. Here is the, the two yarns that I chose. And these are in their standard sock base. Yeah, the standard sock. And Little Sweet Pea is this one. And then the other one is Kissed Tangerine. And those are going to be a two color shawl. And this is what it looks like so far. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this. This is the second try. The first try um, I increased way too quickly and it was not what I wanted. So this is how it's coming along. And it's not very exciting yet. We're going to see. I'm not entirely 
sure if this is, I mean, I know what I'm going for and I'm not sure if this is going to block out the way I want it. So we might have to rip that out and try again, but I'm not too far yet. This is the, this is the trial and error period of designing where you know what you want and then you try things and they may or may not work. So those are the three things that are on the island. Set sail. I have three things, four things, which I did not pile up in the right order here. I just kind of stuck things in here and was not very good about the order of them. <laughs> Yesterday as I was um, around the house like cleaning and stuff, I just stuck everything in, in the bucket. Um, I have a bucket that I use to uh, hand wash stuff or soak things for blocking and I often use it also to collect all my podcast things. So they're all in this bucket because it'll fit in my sink. So I don't have to, because the sink, you know, can get dirty, whereas I keep this fairly clean. So it's nice to just put it in the sink, soak my knitwear, you know, take it out, and then I don't have to clean the sink every time. So that's what everything's living in, but sometimes it's hard to get to things that are at the bottom. So one thing I designed and knit was a dice sweater. I don't know if you can see that because it's really bright here. It's nice and sunny on the first day of spring, which is awesome. So I knit a tiny little dice sweater at the request of my friend. Um, he's the one who designs the games that we uh, demo at Gen Con. And he's like, can you make a little dice sweater? Because you just thought it would be hilarious. So here's a die or a dice. Die. It's a die. It's a funky die because it's from this particular game, but it fit the... The sweater. So I took some extras from my first Bickerstrat socks. Sorry, I have cat hair. There we go. And just cast on the bottom here. I forget how many stitches. Knit up for a ways, did some decreases, and then did a couple rows of ribbing so that wouldn't roll on the top. And then just picked up and knit some I-cord for the little arms. And it turned out really cute. It's really fiddly. It took me maybe like 45 minutes to make, and um, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to make a ton of these. I think I've perfected or at least learned a lot about the process of making tiny little things like this because there was a lot of ends to weave in. That was the most annoying part, but I think for the next sweater, I have some ideas that might make it a little easier. So this is the sweater. We thought it would be really fun to knit up a ton of these and have them at the booth at Gen Con for, you know, when your dice get cold and you need to warm them up so that they roll what you want them to. So I, thought, I just thought that was hilarious. So I wanted to show that to you. It's been a while since I knit that, but I kept forgetting to bring it because it's so tiny. Um, the other thing that I finished, which you saw last week, but didn't quite see it finished. Sorry. I need to stack things better in this bucket. <laughs> Or my Tweety Vicker Strat socks. So these are done now and blocked. Here's the other one. And I love how they turned out. Look at those colors. The colors are fabulous. The pattern is fabulous. The tweeds are fabulous. I just, I love them. So they turned out beautifully. And I love this yarn. It blocked out really nicely. I haven't worn it yet, but I will let you know. This is the, um, <coughs> Sorry, Phoenix Fiber Company in their two-ply sock. And the pattern is by Kemper Ray of um, Junk Yarn. I'm very pleased with them. So I will let you know how they wear. Um, this little funky thing, if you're wondering what it is, is when I blocked them, they, um, they were sinking. And I wanted them to stay up, so I took a clip and just clipped them up like this. And so now they have this funky little thing which will, you know, when I wear them and then wash them again, it'll come out. But if you're wondering what that funky little thing is, that's what it is. It's from me clipping it like this to get them to stay up when they blocked. Whatever. If I had clipped them here and here, it would have been better. But it was late at night. I was like, whatever. I just want to go to bed. <laughs> just clip the things up there. Um, so that's done. That over there. All right. And the next thing I finished was my dragonfly socks by Jocelyn Sertic and this is out of One Twisted Tree in her prime fingering in the Admiral Adama colorway. 
and I love this base. I, I've only knit one pair of socks out of it and I've already bought more. That's how much I love it. Uh, I'm so glad because these are um, as a thank you gift for someone and uh, I was really glad that I bought the stain of sun on your face to knit myself a pair of socks. Because after I knit these I was like I need some socks in this yarn so I'm going to get some. I was very tempted to wind it up yesterday when I was having a winding party. I was like, no, you have other things you need to finish before you can knit these socks for yourself. Although I may get wound up today and knit. So here's the other one. Uh, and I did, um, I did them toe up. It is a cuff down pattern. I did them toe up and I'm just, maybe it is a toe up pattern. Now I'm forgetting. There was another one that I just converted. I don't remember. Anyway. I'm very happy with how they turned out. It's a very simple pattern. The, pro the only problem was it's it's kind of similar to the monkey's pattern. And so when I would switch back and forth between the two, I would have to really concentrate and be like, no, this is what I'm doing on this one. That's what I'm doing on the red one. And it was a little complicated. But it's rather simple. It knits up really quickly. And yeah, I did my typical bottom of the foot, guess it, and such. So these will get mailed off this week. be done. Uh, I think that's it for set sale. From the mainland I have the rest of the goodies from knitting pipeline retreat that I didn't show you last week. So I've already showed shown the apocalypse from Liam and Fiber Arts and I also got another skein. Oops. Things are shifting in the bucket to match this one. So if you remember, I won this as a prize for the Harry Potter Knit Along from Oloops. This is the Nargles colorway. And it has these beautiful purples in it. And pops of green. And I took this to the Knitting Pipeline Retreat. And I was trying to find a matching skein to this. And I was thinking maybe I would find something in the green. But, um, or, I'm not really a pink person, but that would have gone with it. But I really just love the purples in it and I really wanted um, something purple and so I just was holding it in the marketplace just wandering around trying to find something and everyone's like where did you get that and I was like I brought it because I'm trying to find something to match it because I want a two-color shawl out of it and I found this so this is leading men fiber arts in their royalty colorway and their showstopper base which is the same fiber content as the old loops what is this platinum sock so they will go together nicely and they didn't have it in the base that I wanted because I needed it in the same base as this one so that they would you know go well together and you know wash similarly and stuff like that so I ordered that as well and it is absolutely the perfect color a lot of the purples were like too pink or too dark or too light nothing was perfect and this one was exactly what I needed so this is going to become a two-color shawl of some sort. I'm not entirely sure what, but when I got that yarn, I was like, that needs to be a two-color shawl. So it's going to be that. Um, all right, the other thing that I got that I didn't show you last week, I think is probably my favorite thing that I got there. I'm gonna try to take things out of the bucket so I can get to it without causing too much problems, too many problems. All right. So as an Ayamiha gift, my husband said that I could pick something out from the market that wasn't on my list. Because I went in with a list knowing the things that I needed for certain projects and um, or things that I had been wanting to get to try out for things. And so this is what I got. It was totally not on my list. It's not even something that I would normally look at, but it was just so pretty. Hold on, I'm going to take it out of its box so that I can really show it to you. And wait for it. Wait for it. You ready? It's a cloud. I bought a cloud. <laughs> it's a bat from Wool Pierogi. And it's the it's called Crepuscular Rays which are the, um, some people call them god rays. It's when the sun shines through the clouds 
and kind of creates these rays. But it happens a lot in Hawaii over the ocean, so I'm pretty familiar with it. But oh my god. So it comes with twinkle lights. That's what these are. And here I can turn them off so you can see the yarn a little better. There we go. Sorry, not the yarn, the fiber. And this is it. And it looks like a cloud. It just literally looks like a cloud. And I just, I, it's so pretty, I just want to pet it. And it's just so well wrapped. I don't even know how to unwrap this. I don't even know. It's just, it's pretty. So I don't spin, as you've probably noticed if you've watched the podcast before. If you're a new viewer, I'm not a spinner. There's generally not any spinning on this podcast unless someone gives me hand spun, which does happen and is awesome. But yeah, I'm not even going to spin this. I just bought it as an art piece and it's going to live on my shelf in a fancy box that I've yet to get for it. Right now it's just in the plastic box that it came from and I'm just going to pet it because it's so pretty. So it is a one ounce bat of, let me tell you, Organic Polworth Merino and LED lights. Here's the card. Ta -da. And it's Wool Pierogi. And she is so sweet. I got to sit with her a bit at the Knitting Pipeline and she's so sweet. She brought her Gleaner, which is like a, whatchamacallit, like fuzz, re lint remover, fuzz remover for sweaters. And uh, so that I could use it on one of my sweaters, which was just kind of getting super pilly. It's a single ply sweater, so it's as kind of expected. But I had a fun time gleaning my sweater. But this is it just yeah. I'm just gonna hold this here, and you can just look at it. It's so pretty. It's even prettier in person. The sun is kind of washing it out a little bit. You can kind of see the back there, but I just love this like dark streak through here. It's just pretty. So yeah, this is my cloud, and. I've actually tentatively named it uh, Laputa, which if you are a Miyazaki fan, you'll know what that is. Uh, there's the movie Castle in the Sky, and it uh, the castle, which is in the sky, is called Laputa, and it's hidden in this cloud, which to the back of this totally looks like that cloud to me. We watched the movie uh, soon after the knitting pipeline. I was like, that's it. This is called Laputa. And yeah. The idea behind it is that you can core spin it with the twinkle lights as the core, and then you get twinkle yarn. I was like, oh. So maybe one day I'll get someone to spin this and have twinkle yarn, and I don't even know what I'll knit with it. Something really pretty. But that is my little cloud bat. And it just lives on my shelf. And it's pretty. So this is the box it came in, so it's just been living in that. Kind of keep it away from the cat and dust free. So I'll just put that there for now. Oh, I buy my tulips and Chloe. Um, I bought some tulips there that I was at Trader Joe's get, getting some drinks for something. And I saw yellow tulips and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to get some. Because they make me happy. And they're beautiful. I bought the one with like the most tulips on it so that um, I would have tulips for a long time. There's a lot of buds in there too. You can kind of see them. So I will have tulips for a long time, which is awesome. I think tulips are one of my favorite flowers. My other favorite flower is plumeria, which you don't get around here. It's all over the place in Hawaii. And I love, I love the smell. I love just the soft white with yellow in the middle. And it's just oh, it's pretty. And it comes in tons of different colors, but the most common is the white tips with the yellow center. So pretty. All right. Next from from the mainland is I got some a pre-order that I had placed a long time ago, which I probably should have removed from the mailer before I did this, but I didn't. So this is what it is. I got a. We're just gonna show this like this because otherwise it's gonna be overly crinkly. I got a Batgirl bag from Slip Stitch Studios. She was having a um, pre-order for her bag of the month, which was Wonder Woman, like women as in multiples. So she had Batgirl, she had Wonder Woman, and she had Supergirl, I think, for the three. And I got myself 
a, this is what's her notions pouch, but it's gigantic. I mean, I feel like I could put a sock project in there. It's so big. And it's the same fabric as my big bad girl bag. So that's what the fabric looks like, if you're wondering. It's just a smaller package, and I haven't opened it up yet. Um, so that's the fabric, and so it will match this. I need to keep some of my smaller back row things. I don't know. Um, I gave one to a friend. Actually, I got another one. I got the um, Sherlock one for a friend of mine. I also got her the Minion one a while ago. And she uses it as, um, she's not a knitter, but she uses it in her purse to keep, you know, certain things. Because, you know, if you switch purses, it's nice to just, you know, pick up a little thing and just move it to an another purse. So she uses this to keep, like, some makeup or, you know, chapstick or things like that in her purse. So I got her one of these that will be um, for her birthday, which is coming up. So that's fun, but I got this one for me. Yay! So I'm very excited about that. And she always sends these fun buttons with it. So it says, I'm not crazy. I'm just one yarn ball short of a sweater. So those are always super fun. Oh, what? Which one came with this one? Fiber content. 75% superwash merino, 25% dog hair. That's hilarious. I don't know if you can see that through the packaging. But she always has these fun little buttons. For me, it's like 25% cat hair. Okay, some things are a lot more cat hair than they are yarn, but it is what it is. All right, the other thing that came in the mail yesterday was some more yarn from Danny of One Twisted Tree. So I had uh, a while ago asked her if she would be interested in doing a custom colorway for me, which is not something she normally does. Sorry for the crinkling. I just want to take this out of the package to show you. Um, I kind of just made a suggestion like, hey, I have this idea for this awesome color and I was wondering if you'd be interested. And she said yes. And she's like, I'll try it out. And if you like it, great. If you don't, whatever. <laughs> So that was really awesome of her. So thank you so much, Danny. This was an awesome collaboration. So the inspiration was actually a perfume bottle, which I will show you. It looks like this. And you can't, I don't know, it's really hard to see it. Um, but it's, it's, it's purple. It's shimmery. And it's, I mean, it, it, you've got, it's got rainbows in it sometimes when it is shimmery. Maybe now you can see the reflection of the whole room. But... This is the perfume bottle that I sent to, or I sent her a picture, or she looked up a picture. I was like, can you dye a color right based on this? And she has a gold sparkle base. I was like, I needs to be on the gold sparkle base and look like that. I don't know. I just kept looking at that and being like, that needs to be a colorway. So this is what she dyed. Oh, and it is so pretty. It's so much better than I even imagined it. I had just kind of thought of like, oh, tonal purples of like lavender and Danny loves purple that's why um I asked her if she'd be interested and it's really washing me out maybe I bring it back here anyway it's got purples and blues and pinks and it really represents the shimmery multi-faceted colorness of the bottle and it's just so pretty so this is on her glimmer base which is um 75% superwash merino 20% nylon and 5% golden stellina it is beautiful. So these are going to be socks for a friend of mine. And then I also got some Hinky Punk in her prime base, which is merino and nylon without the Stellina. And this is the same one as the Admiral Adama colorway, which I absolutely loved. So these are going to be socks for someone else. And it's this beautiful tonal gray with like hints of purple. It's hard to see that on her website to see the fullness of this colorway. It really just looks kind of gray on the camera, but it's it's got this like over hint of purple. Like from a distance, it just kind of looks gray, but when you really look at it, it's got hints of purple, which is going to be, so these are going to be two pairs of socks and I think they're going to go very well together. Yay! So I think that's it. Oh, one more thing. No, two more things as I'm looking in this bucket is also for Yamiha that I forgot to show off last time. 
My husband got me a little sheep. It's a little Duplo sheep. Isn't that adorable? So Duplo is the Lego, um, comp or the Lego for, um, like, toddlers. So, like, three and four, maybe two. Because the pieces are bigger, so they're harder for them to, you know, stick in their mouth. And, I mean, they're still going to stick them in their mouth, but they're not as much of a choking hazard. And they are compatible with regular Lego bricks. So when they get older and they get, you know, they get into the Lego rather than the Duplo. They are compatible. FYI. But I saw this sheep and I'm like, oh, it's just so cute. And I'm like, I don't, it came in the farm set. I'm like, I don't need the whole farm set. But he managed to get just the sheep. Isn't it cute? And he put a little bow on it. While this is the knitting pipeline retreat, he uh, texted me. He's like, where's the ribbon? I'm like, why does he need to know where the ribbon is? That's why. Because he put a little ribbon on the sheep. And it's just so cute. So he's going to live up here, or she, I don't really know yet. So if you have a name suggestion, I feel like I should name the sheep. If you have a name suggestion, let me know. I don't even know what kind of sheep he is. If you, if you know that either, because he's got brown face and ears and then white wool. And brown feet. I don't know. So let me know what you think. And I think that, oh. I mean, I'll show this off. Sorry, this is the episode of a lot of crinkling because I forgot to open things up. Oh, come on. Open up. So as a thank you for the hat I knit, the Noro hat that I knit, uh, my friend gave me this, which is this beautiful piece of fabric from Japan. She's Japanese, and so she brought or gave me this. And she said that um, the Japanese use it to, like, wrap up bento boxes or things like that. And it's, just, it's so pretty. So I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I could, you know, like, you can put your lunch in it and then kind of tie it up. You know, in the olden days, they used to tie up their lunch in, like, a, a pretty thing. But it's pretty sturdy. It's a pretty sturdy type of fabric there that you could tie up into a little lunch sack. So I don't know. That's what she said that it's uh, mostly used for. So I don't know what I'm going to use it for. So it's like I could tie up my knitting in it and use it like a knitting bag. That'd be kind of fun. I have no idea, but it's just really pretty and I wanted to show it with you, share it with you. Okay, I think that's it from the mainland. <laughs> I don't think I forgot anything in my bucket. No, that's all other stuff. Okay. And the mainland is done. All right, from my holle. Um, I didn't get to share last week about the photo shoot for my new shawl design. Or I don't think I did. I don't remember. Anyway, so last, was it last weekend? Yeah, last weekend on Sunday, um, in between choir and another gathering, I had a photo shoot with my friend for my new shawl design. And it's called Night at the Theater, so I wanted to find a theater. And um, there's an outdoor theater at one of the park's around here and I thought oh I'll use that but then it rained I'm like oh that's not gonna work so that morning conveniently I was at my bell choir performance and a lot of the um, bell choir members are also uh, music majors at Northwestern and I thought oh well, great they probably know of some theaters in the area that I might be able to use so I asked them and they gave me a whole list of them which was great and so during the photo shoot, we just went to the first one. We're like, let's try this one. And if it doesn't work, we'll go to the next one because we had limited time. So we went to the first one and um, we just walked in. Uh, actually, we buzzed in. Someone just let us in and I was like, okay. And then we looked around and there was no one really there as like an office to ask, hey, can we take some photos? So we walked in. There were people like mingling about and like preparing food on this table. And we're like, what's going on? Turns out there was a piano recital about to start in like five minutes. And <laughs> we're like, oh, okay. So we walked into the auditorium. We're like, oh, they're about to have a piano recital. We can't really take pictures in there because that would be super awkward. So we thought, hey, we'll just take pictures out in the lobby while they're all in there enjoying this piano recital. So we got to enjoy the sounds of a lovely piano recital of a very talented pianist. I don't know who she was, but she's very lovely. And we just took pictures out in the lobby and no one ever came and said anything to us. We kept looking. We're like, is there someone around to ask if we can do this? And 
no one ever came, so we just took pictures around the lobby and felt kind of awkward, but it worked out. No one came and said anything to us, so we finished up and left, and we're like, all right, that was good. So that was really funny. And so that's done, and she's working on the pictures now, and I will get them back and soonish. And the pattern is also getting test knit, or uh, yeah, finishing up with test knitters and tech edited, and then it will be ready to be released at YarnCon. So yay for that! I'm really excited to finally get this out. It's been kind of stressing me out lately. So I really hope everything comes together and on time and <laughs> well. So we'll see about that. So that happened last week and I didn't get to share about that. Um, the other thing that I want to share about was it is the Pi New Year today. And I've talked a little bit about the Pi Faith before. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. I don't want to spend a ton of time talking about it, but I'm a member of the Pi Faith. And we just finished up our 19-day fast where we don't eat or drink from sunrise to sunset. And kind of as a uh, reflection time and uh, just kind of a refocusing not so much on spirit or not so much on physical things like food and to spend more time focusing on spiritual things like prayer and reflection and, you know, consulting with friends about, you know, meaningful things and it's a really wonderful time. I really look forward to it every year, and this year was really nice. I actually made it through the entire fast, which is awesome. <laughs> um, sometimes I get sick in the middle just from the sleep deprivation, because uh, I'm not as good about going to bed early. I love getting up early in the morning and watching the sunrise, uh, but I'm not so good about going to bed early just because of things in the evening. But this year I was much better about it. I just really made an effort. I'm like, you know what, it's 8.30. Just get ready for bed. Don't look at the clock. Just pretend like it's, you know, later. And so that worked out. And it was really wonderful. I spent, you know, some good time in the morning knitting and reflecting. And it was really lovely. And so today is our new year. And yeah, I, I love that our new year is the first day of spring. It's just so happy that it's bright and sunny and the flowers are starting to bloom and the birds are chirping and it's really fun. So I went to a big community Nauru's party last night, which was really fun. And today um, there's more celebrations at the House of Worship, which I am singing at and the choir, which was gonna be really fun. And yeah, so this is another reason I bought the flowers. I'm like, you know, it's Nauru's. I'm gonna buy myself some flowers. <laughs> it's pretty. So I enjoyed some tea this morning while the sun was up, which is kind of weird for, it kind of, it's kind of weird for a couple days eating while the sun's up, but I'm like, oh, I get to eat lunch. <laughs> it's kind of weird for a little bit and then you get used to it again, but it's just nice to really concentrate on other things. And yeah, so as part of my reflections, I decided I'm gonna start a bullet journal this year. Um, a bunch of my friends at the Knitting Pipeline Retreat were sharing theirs and sharing how great it was, and I'm like, you know what, I think I need to try this. So I found a notebook yesterday, and it's a very basic, ooh, real exciting, right? I had this notebook, and there wasn't anything in it. Actually, there's one page of something, so I ripped that out. But, um, so I started it, and you start with an index, and then you have a future log, which I put dates of things that are coming up, like weddings, Gen Con, um, paying my car insurance, because <laughs> that only comes up twice a year, and I sometimes forget about it. Um, not forget to pay it, but forget that it's coming. And uh, per, uh, potential parent visit. Uh, my parents might be coming in July. We don't really know yet, so we'll see. The nice thing about bullet journaling is you can kind of make it what you want it to be or what you need it to be. So mine's going to be very simple and not complicated because I don't have time for complicated things. I just need something simple to help me keep track of things. I think that's it for From My Holly. I think that's it for this week. It looks like a lot more in the bucket, but I think that's it. So I'm going to uh, finish getting ready for choir because uh, we have the, the normal performance that we do on Sundays and then the Not Rue celebration and things that are happening this afternoon. Yay! <laughs> so that's really fun. I'm just glad that it's a little warmer outside and the sun is shining. That's really making me happy right now. 
So I hope you all have a great week and I will talk to you soon. Bye.